Hey everyone, Howard Gearhauser here with my dad, Dr. G. Today we are going to talk about naps. Now, I have always been a big napper. I'm a big fan of sleep in general, but I remember growing up, I was considered lazy sometimes because I love to take naps and I love to sleep in and all that stuff. But the good news for all my fellow nappers out there is there's some evidence showing that napping is actually quite healthy. And there's a multitude of benefits from taking naps, as long as it's not, you know, like you're dealing with chronic fatigue and sleeping the whole day, that naps can re-energize you and, and a lot of other things, which my dad's going to talk about. But this is pretty cool. Unfortunately, we've been conditioned to, you know, for a lot of us to work a nine to five job where napping's not included in there. We kind of have to go back to that kindergarten model where you have that afternoon nap to reboot. I mean, that, that's not the worst thing. I know European countries like Spain have kind of adopted that with the siesta. And then you're re-energized to go into the night. So let's talk about naps. What's the latest research showing? All right. Well, there's been studies showing that naps has have benefits. So our culture, you know, I know my whole life working uh, as a physician and jobs I had before I went to medical school, you know, there's no such thing as a nap during the workday. So definitely this isn't something that is easy to implement, but there are benefits. It can improve your mood. It makes you more relaxed. You have better mental performance, better memory, better word recall, uh, better physical uh, prowess. Like if you're an athlete taking a lot of athletes, especially the high level athletes, you know, take a nap before their event or before the big game. So taking naps definitely have some benefits. And I guess you could say there are, you know, different kinds of naps and different duration of naps. And we can, you know, talk about uh, some of that stuff. But napping in general, it's been studied in older populations and in younger populations. And usually it's around a 30 to 90 minute nap tends to have these benefits. Uh, like you say, sleeping all day, maybe not such a great idea. Another thing's been shown in the sleep research kind of over and over, although, you know, everyone's different. You could be an exception to the rule, but over and over in these larger studies on sleep is that there's a sweet spot for the amount of sleep we need. And it's typically around seven to eight hours. And if you sleep less than that, you have more health problems and don't live as long. But also if you sleep more than that, those people also have more health problems and don't live as long. Uh, but you know, it's hard to know if there might be some individuals that need that extra sleep. So I would say if your body's telling you, you know, you need nine hours of sleep. I've, I've had many patients that are terrifically healthy, uh, vigorous people, but they need that nine or 10 hours of sleep. I think those people are out there, but the big studies show that nine or 10 hours of sleep actually shortens your life um, just like too little sleep. Although it could be that, you know, someone who is sleeping those hours has an underlying condition and that's the reason they're so tired. So I think that could affect the research. So I generally tell people to sleep as long as your body feels like it needs it. Right. And that kind of goes back into this subconscious programming kind of matrix thing that we've talked about quite a bit. It's like, it doesn't really make sense to have your foot on the accelerator from 9am to 5pm, just all the way through, especially kind of the afternoon burnout. I mean, what's the point? If there was a nap there and, and you could work more efficiently, Maybe we should start thinking about restructuring that a little bit because it seems like people are relying on stimulants to keep themselves awake rather than listening to their body and taking the necessary nap. So you want to talk about aging yourself, skip the nap when you're exhausted and guzzle down a five hour energy. You know, that's not the answer. That's just keeping the engine running artificially. So if you're not, taking advantage of the nap because of your work situation, you know, change jobs, I guess. 
I'm just kidding, but maybe there's a way to talk to your boss and see if you can incorporate something. I know some of the tech companies are big into napping. Like I know at Google, they have those napping pods and whatnot. So, you know, there's the, the younger companies seem to be, to be wisening up to this. So don't neglect the nap if you need it. Your body's telling you, hey, we got to do some repair. We've got to integrate new information. There's a lot of reasons why we need that sleep. Is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, so the different types of napping, uh, there's planned napping. So a lot of people, like a lot of time, older people, and then again, kids, you know, like every day at two o'clock, I take a 30 minute nap. Uh, so there's kind of, it's ingrained in your in your schedule. And that's how cultures like Spain, you know, it's ingrained in their whole culture that there's a plan of a certain time a day that you have a nap. And of course, in America, we never have that if you work, because, you know, no, no companies do that, except maybe some of the forward thinking companies today, or maybe one of you CEOs out there watching this will say, hey, yeah, a nap sounds good. Increase the productivity in my team. So the plan napping is one way to do it. The way I do it is I don't nap that often, but I nap when I'm especially tired, okay? And sometimes that'll happen because of what I'm doing. Like I'm at the beach for four hours and I'm swimming in the surf and, you know, I'm laying in the sun and I, I just, when I get home, it's like I get the sudden, like almost pass out and you go to sleep. And what is happening there is the sun and the grounding is giving us a download of information into our body. And the way we process that is we get, you know, really mentally tired and we go to sleep to process that information. So if you know you're going to the beach and the sun's going to be intense, so you're going to be downloading all this information into your eyes and on your skin, then, you know, make some time to take a half an hour, hour nap. Uh, or if something else has gone in your life, you didn't sleep enough that night, taking a nap in that situation uh, is good. So that you could say maybe is like an emergency nap or a situational nap. So there's the planned naps, the situational naps, and then there's the habitual napping, and that's someone who, you know, they nap every day, come hell or high water. And that's, that's good, that's their routine, that's part of their sleep. But the problem comes if you sleep so long that you can't go to sleep at your regular bedtime. So I don't recommend very long naps, you know, unless it's an emergency nap that you just didn't sleep at all the night before. So I wouldn't do very long naps. And I wouldn't do naps really late in the day, like after 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. If you take a nap at 5 p.m., you're going to, and remember, we need to get up for the sunrise. That's a key to optimal health. So if you, if you, you know, stay up really late because you were not sleepy because you took a really late nap. So you got to think about that too. Naps can disrupt your circadian mechanism. And that's why a lot of times the sleep hygiene protocols will tell you, oh, don't take a nap. And I agree with that. If your sleep, uh, your circadian rhythm and your sleep hygiene is really messed up, to bring it back into line, it's good to let your body get tired so you can fall asleep at the right time so that you can get up when the sun comes up. Right. And the napping, you know, if you have an underlying condition, can be problematic. So naps are good if you're pretty much healthy. You know, if you're pretty much healthy, don't feel bad about taking a nap. If you're like exhausted all the time, you're going to want to address the energy crisis and not rely on naps because you might not even be recovering at all during your nap if you have a bigger issue going on, like circadian issues or something that's totally depleting your energy. And then relying on stimulants instead of the nap, I just don't think is a very good idea, but I get it. If your boss is on your ass about it, I don't know what you're gonna do. 
other than quit or or say I really need a nap, you know, get get a diagnosis that you need it, I guess. Is there anything you wanted to add before we sign off on this one? No, I think naps are great. Uh, you don't have to do them. If you get enough sleep during the night, you know, you don't need to nap. So don't think, you know, it's the end of the world because you have a job or a situation where there's no way you're going to be able to nap. You know, I, I rarely nap, but it's a great thing to do occasionally. Uh, as I mentioned, it does have a lot of benefits in your physical and mental performance and your mood and your outlook. It improves all those in scientific studies. So it's something that if you can get it in there, if you can't, don't stress out about it. Just try to get your seven to eight hours of sleep as the number one priority, I mean, you know, not a nap, you know, I'm gonna, you know, quit my job and let my family starve to death so that I could take my nap during the day. You know, I probably wouldn't go that direction. Yeah, you, you definitely, you know, this is all about being happy. Make sure you're getting your sleep. If you're in a situation where you, you're in a nine to five and you're just not gonna be able to nap, make sure you're getting seven to eight hours of sleep. Make sure your circadian rhythm's in, intact. Make sure you're doing those 10 protocols that we always talk about. Go check out that video if you haven't yet. But if you had the luxury of having your own schedule, I would modify it in a way so that you can accommodate for a nap if you need one. You know, if you're up at five or 4.30 like I am, you know, by the time three rolls around, a nap sounds pretty good on some days. So it just kind of depends, everyone's different, but for those of you that feel guilty about napping, here's some proof that you don't need to. All right, Dad, I think that's it for this one. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next video, thanks. All right.